Now, not far from Chicago's bustling waterfront is the more serene community of Oak Park, Illinois. I'm heading there to meet Roger and Dominica Thompson. Now, all three of us are in search of something old and something new. Here, Roger Thompson, a Tai Chi instructor and lifelong sculptor, and his wife, Dominica, also an artist, have decided to focus some of their creative energy on the bathroom. Specifically, they'd like to get rid of this pedestal sink and replace it with an oak vanity, one that they've invited me to help them create from an antique piece of furniture. Hey, Dominica, how are you? Roger, good to, to meet you. Park. Well, thank you very much. Come Lovely house. Thank this you. is great stained glass, I think, thank by you. the way. Okay, the bathroom's up here, Ron, right here. Boy, oak, oak everywhere. It's yeah. great. You, did you strip a lot of this by hand? Yes, I did. Wow. It was a long, hard project. I bet it was. Even oak in here, Madison <laughs> Cabin. Yeah. That's no oak down here, though. No, and that's why I want uh, an oak vanity in here. And I think it has to be an antique piece to go with the rest of the house. And it'll also warm up the bed, uh, whole bathroom. So our first step is to hop in my truck and pay a visit to a nearby antique shop. Roger and Dominica have already made some scouting trips here and have identified a few pieces that just might transform into a new vanity. A nice top. A little, uh, it's way too short. You know, this is interesting though, the marble. Yeah, That's I like, like the it. top. We it's might keep this in mind. Well, here's the one that we had looked at previously. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a washstand, too. Right. But mm -hmm. better size. Much better size. And a better finish. And, and it will match and our woodwork. Oak. Yeah. It's Which oak. is essential. Yeah. Yeah. And the lines are simple enough that I think they would go with a house. Yep. Yep. If for the most part, they're straight. Got a little curve in the top here. And you know what's good about this, too, is that I, because of the way it's designed and laid out, I think it's going to make an easier conversion. This drawer gives us mm -hmm. a nice open space right in here. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to have to remove something, but that right. gives us a, at least a, a nice start on accommodating the bowl. Thank, thank you, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> I think you gave me the heavy end. Well, with our cabinet purchased and back home, we begin our conversion by removing the drawers and doors. That marble countertop we saw back in the antique shop inspired us so much, we've decided to add a similar top to our vanity. Made of a marble or granite-like material, it will be shaped and cut to fit right on top of our washstand. All right, Roger, let's uh, lift this up, kind of take it down to you, just, just carry the whole thing down to you a little bit. All right, and then tip it up to me. Great. And then flip it right over on its top. Now we'll need to provide the countertop fabricator with a template, so I've asked Roger to trace the top of the washstand under this brown paper. As he finishes, my carpenter David Schulte shows up with a new sink from the Home Improvement Center. So this is the uh, outline of the top. This is your new sink right here. Now every new sink comes okay. with a template that shows you what the cutout needs to be. So we've actually got two lines here. This outside line is the lip of the sink. Okay. The inside line right here is the shape and size of the hole that okay. we're going to drop the sink into. So if you take a pair of scissors and just cut up to that line. Okay. While Dominica cuts out the sink template, Roger and I take several important measurements so that we can indicate on our drawing or template the location of two support rails and the top edge of the drawer front. We place the sink template on top of the countertop template, then trace the sink outline. After cutting out the sink opening, we place the countertop template on top of our washstand, tape it in place, and trace the sink opening onto the washstand itself. Now we've gone through a lot of steps to make our template right here. The fact is though that a template's going to be different for each piece of furniture and for each sink. But here are some of the basics that we kept in mind. First of all, we transfer the actual shape of the top right here to our base template. And then we added a quarter of an inch, so we're going to have a slight overhang here. I think that's going to give us a nice detail. Then we had to allow for the fact that this drawer comes in here. We actually drew that on our template right here, and then set the basin back far enough so that it would clear the drawer in its closed position. So what we've got here, bottom line, is a template that shows us where to make our cutout on the top and gives the fabricator all the information they need to create the top to the proper shape, size. 
So speaking of fabricators and tops, have you guys picked out a material here? Yeah, we picked out this one. Dominica and Roger have decided on a man-made quartz material that's practically a dead ringer for granite. Okay, so uh, you're going to take this over to the fabricator as a sample. Exactly. I'll give you the template. Right. It usually takes them 21 days to turn this around, so I'm going to see if I can call in a few favors. Yeah, you'll need them. All right, we'll see you next month. Or you'll have to move in with us. He'll do it. <laughs> So guys, we're ready to move on to the next step here while Dave okay. is uh, away getting that uh, to the fabricator. We're going to begin by cutting out that shape on the top. We bore two starter holes, set the jigsaw blade into position, and Domenica starts the cut. As an antique restoration professional, I have to say, it feels a bit odd cutting into an antique. On the other hand, this piece is not completely original. It has already had several modifications made to it, and we'll be giving it a much longer life. There's a, there's a rail back here, a piece running vertically here. Okay. I don't want to cut through that with a jigsaw, so we're just going to finish this cut off, just the, we're cutting through just the top right here. So we're going to just cut down through the top without oh, cutting into the rail. Okay. Yeah. Right, right off, there you go. Okay. okay. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to get our sink, and we're okay. going to put some of the drain fittings on the bottom. We're going to do some test fits in here so mm -hmm. we can see just how much of this we have to remove to give everything clearance. All right? Okay, great. So let's get the sink. Okay. When I put a new sink in, I put everything I possibly can on before I install the sink. So that it's much okay. easier to do it out here. Using a couple of 2x4s to represent the thickness of our new countertop, we do a test fit. We've installed all the plumbing fittings on the sink. Now we have to create an opening for the drain to pass through, which means boring a hole through the back of our cabinet. Now we're going to have to cut a pretty good size hole in here. I want right. some extra room around that drain pipe. And I've got a special tool and a technique for doing that. Let me show you. Now, one of the fastest and easiest ways to make holes up to several inches in diameter is to use a hole saw. This is one right here. It has uh, three parts, an arbor right here that goes into a drill, a pilot bit, and then the hole saw itself. This will fit into almost any drill, usually one that will accommodate a 3 8 inch shaft is best. Just tighten this up. Now, one of the problems in using a hole saw is that you tend to get tear out as the saw itself exits on the opposite side. I want to show you how to prevent that. So let's start drilling from this side. Come around and finish the hole from this side. Now, there you go. See what you end up with here? A clean hole on the side that you begin with, and also a clean hole on the exit side. That's a pretty good fit. Now, we're going to have to deal with the drawers. Obviously, yes. with that sink hanging down like that, the bowl of the sink, this drawer can't go in anymore. So we're going to have to modify this. Also, probably this drawer down here below, too. But let's start with the big one here. I've transferred the shape of the sink bowl onto the back of the drawer for Roger to cut out with the jigsaw. I've also traced a clearance slot for the drain pipe that Dominica needs to cut out of the drawer bottom. The, the, the main thing here is just the blade is going to move up and down, yes, at a rapid rate, but you control how fast you move forward. Okay. So just take your time. All right. Yeah, not bad. Excellent. Yes. Was it? No. Okay. Very nice okay. job, by the way. Very Thank nice you. job. Okay. Hey, hey. We did a right. pretty good job, yeah. huh? Our new countertop will be three inches deeper than our washstand. To make our washstand depth the same as the countertop, we're attaching a couple of oak strips to the rear edge of the sides. Back upstairs, we've removed the old pedestal sink and water valves. Now, guys, we want to transfer the location of these water supply lines to the back of our cabinet. Okay. We, we normally just measure those, but these are coming out at an angle. That presents us with a little bit of a a measurement problem. So do you have that lipstick I asked for? Yes. Is it your shade? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's You're the probably wondering you. why I wanted this, right? <laughs> this is a this is just a great uh, marking technique. You can use oh. this kind of uh, technique for putting strike plates on doors, whatever. Wow. So I put the lipstick on the end of these dowels. I'm going to slip them up okay. inside the pipe like this and push them in. Okay. 
Now we can set the, also, the like, cabinet back in it. place. It nice. does kiss it. Yeah. Oh, that's very nicely put. I wouldn't have thought <laughs> we'd use that word. But, okay, now put this in, our, in position here. You guys let me know when you're ready. Okay, now we're good. Yeah. Now I'm going to reach down here. I'm just going to pull this dowel out until it contacts the back of the cabinet. I'll twist it a little bit, transfer the lipstick to the cabinet. That's where we want to drill our hole. Now this is how we're going to attach the cabinet to the wall. This line right here is the inside of the cabinet. I put the L bracket up here, made a couple of marks through these holes, and now we're going to drill using a masonry bit. This is actually a block wall right here. Okay, now into those, we'll put a couple of plastic anchors. We screw the brackets into place, and now we're ready for the cabinet. All right, folks, we're ready to set this in place. Okay. So uh, you see those ears we put on the wall there? Okay. After drilling pilot holes into the cabinet, we insert screws through the brackets and secure the vanity in place. Now we're about ready to put our countertop on. This is a special adhesive just for this quartz material. And I'm going to put just about five dots of this. OK, guys, you can bring the countertop in now. OK, come in. One more here. The reason we're not putting more on is that should they ever want to take this off, it can be kind of popped up. All right, there you go. OK. All right, just set it right in place there. OK, let it down slowly, slowly, slowly. OK, now you can slide it around a bit. Well, our template worked. Yeah, huh? that's uh, beautiful. Something's Good working job. great. Good <laughs> job. That was a great templating job, both of you. Right. Excellent. OK, let's get the sink. Yep. Yeah. OK. This is a sealant here, Roger. I'm just going to put a bead of this around the edge okay. of the lip here. Being careful not to touch the adhesive around the lip of the sink, Roger and I slowly lower it into place. OK, this is warm water, Roger. I'm going to put just a little bit of liquid dishwashing detergent in there, okay. mix that up. And this is going to make this water just a little bit slippery so that I can now, my fingers wet in this, okay. kind of go around here and just take off the excess material. After wiping off the excess adhesive, Roger installs a new P-trap, hooks up the water supply lines, and our vanity conversion is complete. So you like the countertop? Love this countertop. Very it nice. is gorgeous. This is, look at I think wonderful. you're going to be really happy with this. I've used this material before in this quartz. Uh -huh. It is non-porous, won't stain, very tough. But even more important, I think to me, it looks like it belongs here. And it really looks yeah, like stone. It it, it's really nice compared to the other tops that yeah. we looked at. And it warms up the bathroom, makes the bathroom look a lot better. It goes with our towels. <laughs> <laughs> That was my inspiration. <laughs> All along. Just All along. I didn't want to tell you that. But we had so much trouble finding Something to go with our towels. Well, whether it's because it matches the towels or all the other oak features, our new custom-made vanity looks like it truly belongs in this beautiful century-old home.